a Chamber of Commerce day here in Austin, Texas. Let's play two. Game one between the Longhorns and the Boilermakers next on Longhorn Network. What a great day here in Austin, Texas. Keith Morrill along with Hall of Famer Greg Swindell. Zeke, when you looked at last night's ball game, it was all set. The table was set. Two out hitting was important, but Bryce Elder was the main. Yeah, Bryce Elder again on Friday night throwing outstanding as Texas is going to need that. But the two out hitting five of the seven runs came with two outs and a man that's been in the middle of that all season. Right fielder Austin Todd. Boy, Austin Todd has just been outstanding. He, he's done a job of setting the table, playing good defense, but it's what he's done offensively that's been the key. He is a leading RBI guy. He's a leader in extra base hits. He's done everything offensively this team can need. Well, he's healthy again, and the numbers so far this season are proven that. He leads the team in hits with nine and RBIs with seven. Well, you look at that scenario. Now you got to look at today. When you go to the mound, Blair Henley, he is the most experienced pitcher for Texas. It's crazy because I am now one of the guys that they look up to. There are a few things here and there that I need to do that I didn't do last year, and I'm realizing I need to step up. I'm just kind of focusing on more the mental part and just staying consistent. I'm just trying to get better. As Keith said, the most experienced, but roughed up a little bit in his first start in Louisiana. He was in the middle of the plate today. Stay out of the middle of the plate. These Boilermakers, they can swing the bat. We saw that last night. He got ahead a lot in that first game. It just couldn't finish him off. And how do you do that? You, you go right after him. You attack these hitters. And I like what he said, the mentality and trying to be be more. Well, that's that's kind of been the M.O. for Blair Henley since he's been here. The stuff has always been there is can he get over that hump? And it all starts with the mentality. How do you look at this lineup? Uh, Purdue comes in looking for their first victory of the year. They've done a pretty good job, especially at the top of this lineup, Greg, of putting themselves in position. They've got some guys that can swing the bat. Yeah, they got, it starts again with the leadoff hitter, Cole McKenzie, but those two, Skyler Hunter and Zach Fascia, they, they can swing the bat. So he's the table setter right now, though, is Cole McKenzie. We're about ready to go. First of two today. A lot of baseball here at the dish. Henley's first pitch. Misses outside for ball one. Cole McKenzie. Steps in hitting 250. Billings, Montana. That's the opportunity to see some video of him playing in the College World Series. Excuse me, not College World Series, the Little League World Series. He's trying to get to the College World Series. Yes, he is. For Blair, his first start at Louisiana, just two innings. He gave up five hits and four earned runs. And of those five hits, three were extra base hits, three doubles in that game. It starts off. McKenzie with a walk. You know, I, I loved what you said in your scouting report when you look at Blair attack and attack to me means it, it, you, you got to You almost got to say here it is hit it. I'm going to make my good my best pitches here. I'm going to attack you. You're going to have to swing the bat. Can't have the walks. Yeah, you, you can attack early. I mean obviously the four pitch walk doesn't help but you, you attack early and then then you, you could still attack just just outside the zone. But it starts with getting ahead. He does right there. To Owen Jensen. Sophomore from Oakville, Ontario, Canada. Breaking ball stays upstairs and the count evens. Talking with Coach Waz for Purdue, we talked. He asked him about his offense, and he says, "Whatever it takes, right now." I mean, it's still early in the season, so right there, you see Jansen squaring around to bunt, possibly trying to get into scoring position and get on the board early. You know, they've had some leads. They had the lead in the sixth inning plus in three ball games down in Hattiesburg against Southern Miss last weekend. Now they never had the lead last night. They closed the gap to two to one at one point in the game with a run in the fourth. So if they decide to switch it up here, I know it's two one count. As a pitcher, you see a guy squaring around. You throw it right down the middle. You, you want the out early in the ball game. All balance misses up and away and all of a sudden it's three and one. That 
what point does, oh, can I get this done happen to a guy? This is his 30th start as a Texas Longhorn. Well, we talked about the mentality. It, it, it's mental for Blair Henley. You can, you can watch body language, too. Yeah. Blair doesn't show too much emotion or body language out there, but after that three ball count right there, you kind of saw him at like, oh man, and that's that's when you have to concentrate a little bit more. Especially early, your team is scoring runs. Texas scored 11 against Rice, seven again last night. They're gonna put, put some runs on the board. Runners off, hit on the ground, perfect hit and run, right? for Regan had left to go cover second base. Great opportunity here, perfectly executed. Boy, it's, that's, that's why you put the runner in motion, Greg. Put him in motion. You'll see Bryce Regan break to second, and right there, Jansen doesn't try to do too much, just puts it right in the hole where Regan was. Purdue has something working, and David Pierce going to the mound to talk to his pitcher. I don't even know if he want, needs the infielders out there. This is all for Blair Henley right here. He's going to look him right in the eyes. Sometimes you, sometimes you need a wake-up call. You know, I, I, you felt like maybe he got one in his first opportunity. And, and Greg, now, you, you've had a lot of starts. And, and you can walk a guy and give up a base hit and get the first you guys get on. But you find a way to grab yourself here and limit the damage now. Exactly. I mean, if he gets that same ground ball, you get a double play. You'll take that Absolutely. right now. Two outs. Give up the run. Looking for an out. Nissel's been really good. Two for six with runners on this season. The sophomore. Hitting 312 on the season as he steps in here. Head in the count now, 1 0. Good breaking ball and a fastball count. Nissel was looking heat right there. Yeah, he was fooled the entire yeah. time. Yeah, he, he thought he was going to get a fastball for sure. So the count evens. Just misses inside. Home plate umpire Jerry Johnson, known for having a fairly small zone. We've seen that here early in this game. Coach Waz in his third year. What a turnaround he's made with this program. Purdue, the year before Coach Waz got there, won 10 ball games. Last year, an appearance in a regional. Only the third in school history. That's just great improvement. Two and two. This steps back out. The breaking ball has been his best pitch in the first inning so far. The fastball has just missed a few times, but more success with the breaking ball. The two two. Chopped on the ground. Only play is going to be to first. He gets the out. Purdue plays with a lead. As McKenzie comes in to score. This ball pounded right off of the plate. Not off of the plate in the turf. Way up there. You think if it didn't go that high, you might have a chance at home, but that ball stayed up there a while. Basher will step in. Had a good night last night, did Zach. Hitting 545 as he steps in here. Big swing and a miss. He does not get cheated. Good change up. You, are, you already have an idea. He's going to be hacking first pitch. So if you get a breaking ball close, he's going to be swinging. Yeah, he, he comes to the plate. Letting it fly. The 0-1. Shot foul quickly. Henley out in front now. No balls and two strikes. And this is what we were talking about. This happened a lot to him in game one. Now, 0 2. Well, so you have an aggressive hitter gotta, at the plate. You got to stay out of the middle of the dish. Exactly. Here. You, have an, you have a 
O2 count, an aggressive hitter, you can go out, out of the zone. O2. Lined into right field. That's going to be a base hit. They're going to hold the runner at third as Todd comes on quickly. Makes a nice throw to the plate. Again, an 0-2 pitch for a base hit. But he did have fashion a little fooled out front a little bit, but too much plate, too much air right there. And fashion able to get the bat on it and hit it solid into right field. He got a couple of pitches right there. I know he didn't want to hang it. But you got to bury it on his back foot right there. Skylar Hunter steps in, center fielder. He's a true freshman. Mooresville, Indiana. As he steps in. Hitting 200 on the year as he comes to the plate here. On the ground, right side, into right field, coming in to score. On his way to third, fashion to throw to third, offline, gets away. Back against the wall, here comes Fasha to the plate, and it's 3-0 Purdue. Just a seeing-eye single, and then all the activity took place. That ball just finds the hole by Bertelson down at first base. He gets off the bag, but it's just out of his reach, and an ill-advised throw right here by Austin Ty. I understand you have a good arm in right field. Get the ball back on the infield, keep a double play in store, but right now it's three on the board. And another runner in scoring position. Johnny Sade steps in. He's a junior from Spokane, Washington. Doubled in last night's ball game. Made an outstanding catch in the first inning. To take away extra bases from Zach Zubia. Hitting 308 as he steps in. On the ground. Regan has it. Across the diamond in time for the second out of the inning. So two gone. A local product from Allen, Texas. Bryce Bonner will step in. Came in late in last night's ball game. Jesuit college prep. But from Allen. 2017 was a freshman All-American. Breaking ball in there for a strike. Oh, one one to Bonner. Three runs on three hits. One missed cue for Texas here. Top of the first. Back to Henley. Snares it. Underhands at the first, and that ends the inning, but not before the Boilermakers get on the board. They lead 3 0. We go to the bottom of the first. Welcome. The Boilermakers jump out with a three spot in the top of the first, and they will send to the mound Ryan Beard, named after Ryan Klesko. What can you tell us about him, Zeke? Well, he's a big left hander. We know that from Boise, Idaho. His little scouting report limit the free pass has been a problem for the Purdue pitchers this year and get deep in the ball game. He did go five and a third in his first start. So if he can get deep in this game with the second game going on today after this one, he's a three pitch guy, fastball slider and a changeup for Ryan Beer. You look at the Texas lineup a little bit different today. Obviously, DJ moves up into the fourth spot. He's the DH. Burleson will start at first base, moving to the five hole and then Lance Ford. He's been swinging the bat quite well. Will play second. Moves into that seventh spot in the order. Austin Todd still the guy that has really swung the bat well. We're looking for base runners. Something different right here. Trailing 3-0 in the first inning. Duke Ellis has been doing a real job of getting on base. Well, he has 10 walks on the season already. That's a ton. This early in the year. Fouled off. Left side out of play. Not wasting any time. Eleven walks for Duke on the air does lead the Big Twelve.
The 0 1. Outside corner. Quickly, Duke down on the count 0 2. Beards 0 2 delivery. Did he check his swing? He did not. He went around, gets the strikeout. That's the one you want to avoid if you're the left handed hitters today. That slider, sweeping slider out of the zone right there. You can't hold up. It's interesting, Texas on the season had struggled a little bit against left handed pitching. They, they are now 15 for 65 on the year against lefties, 35 for 114, 307 against right handed pitching. It's interesting left handers against Beard were swinging better than right handers, though. It could be the reason why Coach Pierce stacked the lineup. 1 1 to Kennedy. Hit pretty well into the teeth of this breeze. One of the things we're going to talk about as the day goes on, Greg, we were watching batting practice. Anything from the new scoreboard in right field to the right field line. Is gonna jet out of here. Yeah, if you saw the game last night, the ball Zach Zubia hit would have been out on Comal Street oh, today. No doubt. It's carrying. It was carrying real good in batting practice. That brings Austin Todd to the plate. Austin, two run triple to secure the victory last night, put the game away. Six one hundred seventy five pound junior from Round Rock. The 1 0 downstairs, and it's 2 0 to Todd. In fact, Purdue's outfield defense is really shedding everybody to right field. Anything hit in the air Nissel to, <laughs> to left is it's going to be held up and pushed back towards the field right. to play. Nissel is playing way over left center, under, nearly under the 370 sign. Everybody leaning to the right. See Nissel coming into your picture right there. On the ground hard. Nice job to his left. Powers makes the play. One, two, three goes Texas. Bottom of the first. Three nothing Purdue. Baseball on Longhorn Network is brought to you by Whataburger. The one of a kind honey barbecue chicken strip sandwich served hot and fresh only at Whataburger. Top of the second, 3 0 Purdue. The new statue of Coach Garrido joins the other three that have been out in front for quite a while here at UFCU Dishfuck Field. Henley's first pitch in there for a strike. Greg, this is a big inning for Blair. He needs to find a way to get comfortable and throw a zero up here right now. That's what it, he talked about working on the, the mental part of the game, and that, that's so big in a situation like this because you could go out there right now and, and just throw. You, you still have to concentrate. You still have to think a pitch ahead. And, and for Blair Henley, that's been what he talked about. He's, he's trying to get better at that, and no bigger inning than now. Albrecht steps back in. A good pitch there. First strikeout for Blair and a good start here in the second. A good movement. That ball not in, but had some good depth to it. Got under the bat of Albright. Powers will step in. Sophomore from hometown boy in Lafayette. Breaking ball for a strike. Are there times? It's you're a little nervous. You had a tough first out and you go out in the first and really get rattled. And then all of a sudden you does you ever hit it where I'm just going to let it go. It ain't well, it, the, you know I'm just going to let it go. You still have to concentrate on, on what the pitch is. You can't just go out there and, and throw the ball. Yeah. You have to concentrate. You have to locate. But yeah I mean I, I have been I've, I've invented pitches trying to make up things in situations. Can I throw a BP fastball right here. I, I'll try it. Why not. I'm not getting anybody else. Let's try something Tell else right here. It, I'm going to throw a Peggy Lee about five miles an hour <laughs> right. slower than my other yeah. one. <laughs> Up the middle. Forward there. In time. Two quick outs. 
So you're starting to see him settle in a little bit. And, and that's what I'm talking about. Sometimes I think you get so amped. And I, I know as an offensive player, when you start going, it starts going south, <laughs> you feel like you did. You know, how do I get out of this? Just let me, I got to change something. Get in a different spot in the order. Sometimes I always want to say, I'll just go up there left-handed. <laughs> He's, he's getting ahead. I mean, the guy has three hitters this inning. That helps. Good change right there. Had him out in front. Back to back. Change ups by Blair. McKenzie. If one way's not working, start pitch backwards. That's what he's doing right here. Starting him off with change ups and breaking balls. First 10 guys through the order. Henley's been an out, out in front. He's thrown strikes, first pitch strikes to seven of them. Does trail here three nothing. This is upstairs in the count evens. That's the one he need. He's, he's trying to back leg that one right there. That's the one he, he, he got real good at it last season. Back up the box. Regan to his left. Long throw in time. Nice play. The young freshman. One, two, three. Go the ball makers here in the second. Henley answers. Three nothing. The Big 12 is incredible for this year. The talent in our league is crazy. Texas Tech, Baylor, TCU is going to really pitch it this year. From top to bottom, I mean, West Virginia has a potential first rounder. There's not a single day that you go into a conference game and feel like you have a win. You have to earn everything in the Big 12. Well, you just look at the, the entire scenario. Uh, obviously, uh, uh, Josh Young is, is one of the best players in the country. He was right there with Cody for player of the year last year, and, and he's back. And then uh, the pitching, there is some solid pitching in this league, there's no doubt. And I, I, I got to tell you, that, that upper division is as good as the upper six in this conference, or as good as anybody in the country. Well, I mean, the, see, the, the rankings tell that. You saw Lodolo there. He, he's 0 and 2. He hadn't won a game this year, but he's got big league stuff. Tall, lanky, kind of a Cole Hamels look. And then Alec Manoa, he's had two starts with a sub one ERA, just 12 innings and 21 strikeouts this year. Yeah. Dominant. DJ steps in. He's the DH, the senior from Magnolia. It's his ball pretty well to center, but playable for Hunter. He's able to come up with it, but you, you look at it, 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 obviously the Red Raiders, a, a team that off to a good start. They're three and one. TCU's three and two to me is a little misleading because who they played. Right. I mean, they played Top Vanderbilt, rank. Virginia, Cal State Fullerton. Grand Canyon took it to him last night. Yeah. Andy Stankwitz, the coach there. But yeah, I mean, it's it's a powerful conference. Losing Langlers is going to hurt Baylor a little bit. And, and TCU will, will be good. They're, they're good now. They've just, like you said, the teams they've played. Well, you're going to find out about yourself, so much like Texas. I mean, uh, we've talked about it uh, already. The, this schedule, the, the month of March, it's a gauntlet. Well, Texas is going to find out what, what yeah. it's all about coming up. Two and one to Sam as he steps back in. Crushes this ball, but hooks it foul. Let that ball beard did inside left handers when you're bailing a little bit you leave it inside you're gonna, it's gonna get hit hard that's what you want him to do right there pull it foul. get it as far as you can to foul and I'm gonna come right back with this breaking ball on you this is way outside and the count goes full Longhorns looking for their first base runner trailing here three nothing Payoff pitch. Back out of play. Sam's got some power. He'll leave that one over the plate. He can hit it far, especially with this breeze. 
Seventh pitch of the at bat coming. Upstairs, ball four, first base runner for Texas. Good at bat right there. Fought off a couple good fastballs to get the count. Took that one. That's, that's one lefties like. They like that one right there. That's in the wheelhouse, especially with this breeze. I mean, your eyes have to light up when you, you walk in the park and see the flags. The oh, no doubt. Blow. I've been right handed hitter, and I want to hit today. Get it in the breeze. Ron Reynolds off to a fantastic start. With a junior from Sugarland, switch hitter from the right side. Big blow last night. Opposite field, two run single in the first. Gave Texas a lead that they never surrendered. Asked Ryan yet about the glasses. I, I'm assuming that they are something prescription. This ball back through the box into center. He continues to swing the bat well, does Ryan Reynolds. So far this year, you've seen a controlled swing out of Ryan. I mean, that one right there, just taking it right back up the middle last night, taking it to, to the opposite field. Freshman from Kerrville, Tyvee High School in Kerrville. Lance Ford steps in. He has swung the bat well. He's gotten the opportunity. Lefty lefty matchup here. First pitch from Beard just misses outside for ball one. Ron Beard's parents not only named him after. Ryan Klesko, but his middle name is Kicks. Boot scooting boogie. Uh, that's what I've said. Red Dirt Road. <laughs> well, misses outside. So Beard now down on the count. 2 0 to Ford. Michael McCann awaits on deck. The 2 0 down Broadway. And it's 2 and 1. Ford steps back in. Got a pitch to hit. Fouled it back, reached for it a little bit, but that ball was up. Yeah, it was up. He's, he's been away. He came in to, to Bertelson a few times, but I think those are just mistakes coming in on Sam. I, if I'm a lefty now, I'm going up, look at, I mean, leaving that, letting that slider go away and just looking for that fastball away. If he comes in, I mean, you could fight it off. The 2 2 here. There, breaking ball misses outside. Ford's been good with runners on. He has two for three on the season. Don't believe you'll see him in motion here. But a big pitch here early in the game for Ryan Beard. We'll look out over the over the plate right here and use the entire field. Left fielder Nissel way in. Upstairs and the base on balls. Longhorns have them loaded. Michael McCann comes to the plate. Man has done an outstanding job, was away from the program, came back to the program, and is now an integral part in his senior year. He's hitting every ball game this season. He's done a good job behind the plate. Big opportunity right here. Purdue looking for the double play ball. Here from the stretch comes set. Breaking ball in there, first strike. It's two for four is McCann with runners in scoring position this season. This is the first time he's come to the plate 
with them loaded in 2019. Fly balls will be an adventure with the 30 miles an hour breeze. If it gets up there high enough, yeah. It's going to drift. Hit well into the gap in left center. That's going to go for extra bases. Cut off by Hunter. Longhorns could tie the game. Here comes the throw to the plate. Not in time. We're tied at three. Michael McCann likes it over there on third. Took that first pitch breaking ball. Got a fastball up in the zone. Boom. Looks it against the breeze. They had the shift with the breeze on. Did the Boilermakers in the outfield. This one finds the, some turf. Lance Ford being waved all the way from Sean Allen. Just under the catcher there, Bryce Bonner. We got a tie game. Can just rips it into the gap. Just like that. This ball hit well to right. It's got a chance to get out of here. Going back, looking up. This ball is gone. First career home run. Bryce Regan, welcome to Austin. Talk about the breeze, Keith. This ball is hit well, but with the breeze, it gets up. You can see Johnny Sage, he, th he thought he had a beat on it for a second when he gets going back, and then it just keeps drifting over his head. And then to the Texas bullpen. Almost had some tacos. Got close. <laughs> well, one of the reports, scouting report, as Bryce Regan gets his first curtain call here at the dish. Limit those free passes. Two of those runs that have come in this inning were walks. Something that's hurt Purdue so far this year. Well, a great answer is Henley comes out in the top of this frame, sets the tone by going one, two, three. Longhorns after DJ Pop to center. Took advantage of a walk, base hit, walk, triple, and a homer. Pitch to Duke in there for a strike. I'm going to go out on a limb here, Zeke, and say that's not the last ball we see go out of here to right today. No. We got a lot of baseball. We got a couple games here. Yeah. It's supposed to die down a little bit, but not much. Top of the order was really was or were outstanding in the first four ball games of the year. A one for 14 in these first two games. They have struggled at the top. Now they've scored some runs, but reaching via the walk. But they've struggled offensively. The three-one to Ellis. Upstairs, ball four. There is no defense for the base on balls. You can't defend it. One, you can't defend it. Two, your, your defenders start to get on their heels. They do. I mean, I hate to keep pounding it, but that's that's the way it's been for Purdue this year. I mean, the, most of their runs have been via the walk that they've given up. Already 36 pitches from Beard. Retired the first four Longhorns he faced. Has not gotten an out since. Kennedy by to center his first time up. Breaking ball misses upstairs for ball one.
Left hander set. This ball hit well to right. It's got a chance to get out of here. Gone. Second of the year for Eric Kennedy. Second of the game for Texas. Second freshman with a home run in this inning. I don't think the win helped that one. That ball was hit pretty hard. You can hang a month's laundry on that line drive. The wind did not help this at all. Great extension. You can see that barrel coming down and through it, creating that underneath rotation. Ooh. He's a strong kid. And it's out of here in a hurry. Longhorns have batted around now, still just one out in the inning. On the ground. In time. Austin Todd is retired. Tenth batter of the inning will be DJ as he comes back to the plate. Three walks in the inning, all three have scored. Three extra base hits in the inning for Texas. And a seventh spot. Biggest inning of the year so far for the Longhorn offense. Seven all game last night. Seven in this inning. First time the Longhorns have hit two balls out of the ballpark in the same ball game. It is early in the year. Almost got some free tacos. Downstairs. And it's three and one to DJ. I thought it was a funny story. Was it Northwestern last year? I think when Casey or Cody, one of them hit the, hit the taco sign. The pitcher, when the coach went out there to take him out, he said, does that mean I get tacos? Did I get a taco too? <laughs> Catches the outside corner. Got to have a little fun when you're playing this game. The payoff. Pop right side. Playable. Powers has it, and that does it. But not before the Longhorns do damage. It starts with McCann into the gap. Regan's first career homer. And Kennedy caps it off. Game two of this doubleheader scheduled about 30 minutes after the conclusion of the first game. And don't forget, we wrap up the series tomorrow, 1230 Central. That's a special start time. You can catch it all here on LHN or the Watch ESPN app as Henley back out now. Different mindset, got to have. That's one of the first things I want to ask you. I mean, struggled in the first, gave up three years. Offense put seven up. Now what? Well, even bigger inning for Blair Henley that you thought last one was after giving up runs well now your team has put up seven and given you a four run lead same mindset go out there attack challenge get ahead he's done that so far Jensen singled and scored his first time up it's a good start for the sophomore right out in front of the plate the cans there in time now all of a sudden Five in a row retired by Blair Henley. Well, not as not as many fastballs since that first inning. You see a lot of breaking balls. He's found a good the change up. That's a pitch he's thrown a lot since that first inning. And that's what you have to do. You have to be able to change. There's another change up just up in the zone. Missile grounded out his first time up. That hitting. 
Brought him up around the shoulder. So after retiring five in a row, the hit batter. Fascia will step in. Zach. Singled and scored his last time. And that can happen when you throw a lot of breaking balls. You haven't you haven't thrown your fastball. The release points different on those pitches. It got away from me. Just an outstanding start for Zach on the year. He's got good power. This breeze blowing to right. Keep it in the ballpark. Get him out in front on the changeup. Went away with the fastball and really extends out there and finishes that changeup. Very tough to pick up. Misses again. The MO now to come back to the change again. Yeah, well, fat, Fashion hadn't proven that he can lay off it. I think he might be looking for it. the 2-1 on the ground should be two four six three and a beauty the young freshman turned the double play Ten runs on the board, seven of them for the Texas Longhorns. They lead here, bottom of the third inning. Keith Borland, Greg Swindell with you. Game one of two today here on a beautiful afternoon. The whole world, especially the northern United States, snow and winter is still going on. It is a gorgeous day here in Austin, Texas. As Burleson steps in, first pitch breaking ball in there, first strike. Eight inches of snow in the desert. How about that? Right outside of Phoenix. The 0 1. Dropped in there quickly. It's 0 2. Sam. Las Vegas with their largest snowfall in 10 years. Off speed misses outside. Wind may be starting to settle a little bit, Greg. You talked about as the day went on, it may settle a little bit. The glory just got tangled up out there. There, there she goes. <laughs> Sam walked his first time up, came in to score in that seven run second. Outside corner. Gets the strikeout. Here it comes back. He's retired now, three in a row. Bonner wants it out. Was outer, outer. Gets the call, gets the strikeout. Ryan Reynolds singled up the middle and came in to score. Well, there's want guys to get off to a good start. And Ryan Reynolds, who struggled offensively. Much of 2018. Off to an outstanding start here as a junior. Heads up. Ooh. That would have hurt. Yeah, sit there, ready to get your burger and get hit in the back of the head or something. That was close. Man in the jersey there. He just saw it and got out of the way. Chop foul, and it's one and two. Fifty four pitches under his belt. He had a one two three first struggled in that second with command. Caught the outside corner and back to back strikeouts third for Ryan Beard. Yeah, off speed pitch away. Curveball that comes around the back side of the plate and got the call again. Lance Ford walked and scored his first time up. Yeah. 
freshman from Kerrville Tyvee. Upstairs. If a guy has a good changeup, I know I've asked you this before, but as a left hander to another left hander, you didn't use it very often. Uh, and I, I still never knew why. It was just like the. Well, I never, I never looked at a guy, a right hander that was going to throw me many changes. The guys that were always going to throw me changes were left handers. Yeah, I think lefty on lefty with the changeup. The power zone for most lefties is low and in, and that's usually where the changeup from the lefty ends up. So you're taking the chance. Three one to Ford. Popped up. Fodder runs out of real estate. We'll do it again. Three two. Strikes out the side. All three looking. Fourth strikeout of the game for Beer. Through three, seven, three ball game. It was outstanding again. Second start of the season. He was able to command his breaking ball, Greg, and to use his sinker, as you see right there, did a nice job of a mixture. And we get the opportunity to go down and visit with him in the dugout right now. Bryce, thanks for taking the time to do it. You know, I talked to you last week after the first start, and you talked about getting into that rhythm. And did you feel like you got back into that rhythm like you did in the first start yet last night? Uh, I think at times I did. Um, I actually kind of struggled getting into the rhythm. Uh, the innings, in between innings seemed really long, and uh, I think a little bit could have been focus, but um, it's something we've talked about. But uh, I don't know, it was, it was pretty good. I, uh, I settled in after a few innings and, uh, and got in a rhythm, which, which really benefited me. Hunter yeah. leads it off with a base hit. Well, Bryce, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming you started in high school, then last year just the one start and came out of the bullpen a lot. What's been the, the main adjustment you've had to make to get back into that rotation? Uh, I mean, I think the biggest deal is just the routine and the preparation the week before. And in high school, uh, I, I liked that. And last year, I didn't have that. It was kind of just you're going to come in and you don't know if you're going to pitch today. You don't know how long you're going to pitch if you do pitch. So I, uh, I enjoy the... Uh, the, the routine and everything that comes with starting. Now the day after, like today, today is a recovery day. Uh, uh, what, what, what were some of the things that you would do today to bounce back to get ready to go next Friday night? Uh, well, we, me and Steve got a workout in this morning. Uh, did a little running and, and uh, cardio stuff and then did some rolling out and getting everything ready to go. Bryce, when you learned that you were going to be the Friday night starter, uh, that your feeling about that and what, what your thoughts of just uh, being the Friday guy here in Texas? Uh, I mean, I, I was very excited. Um, I think at the same time, it doesn't it doesn't necessarily change anything. I still have to go out and get the first out and the second out and third out of each inning. And so, um, I mean, of course, emotions were high. I was fired up. But I mean, I think at the end of the day, um, you got to go out and do the same job as, as if you were a bullpen guy on a Tuesday. So it, it's it's all relevant. The 2-1 pitch coming here as we get back, visiting with last night's starter Bryce Elder. Off of Henley, gets by Ford. What a double play. One, four, six, one, four, three. Double play. That's a really nice play right there. As a pitcher, you, you react, and that's what Blair gets his glove just enough right there. Ball possibly up the middle, but Lance Ford quick to the ball, touches the bag, and a strong throw to first. Yeah, you like that one, huh, Bryce? I sure did. <laughs> All right, now, now, we got you on the replay. We got you on replay as well. <laughs> now, now, Bryce, when, you, when you're when you looking at another guy, at Blair's a veteran guy, but uh, you watch, you know, had his struggles in the top. Uh, uh, is that something that you're watching and seeing what he does and how he reacts? And can you help him or does he help you? How do, you, how do y'all work together as a staff? Um, well, actually, I have a tough time just being you know, after my second start last night, and he's been starting since his freshman year. I mean, I try to get over it, but I have a tough time trying to, like tell him what to do because I mean he's been there more than me but I think that we're, we're very close and um, I think that relationship allows me to talk to him and just I think 
keep his confidence high, and I think in the first inning that was some of his problem, but he looked like he's got it back now, and he's settling down. Thanks for taking the time to visit with you. Good, congratulations on last night. Good luck the rest of the weekend. Thanks, sir. I appreciate it. Blair Henley, after giving up the three spot, Greg, in that first inning, uh, has really settled in. And, and the Longhorns came back offensively and got seven. We're going to have the opportunity to uh, visit with the head coach of the Purdue Brawl Americans, Mark Wazakowski. And I think we have Coach on with us. Coach Waz, you with us, sir? Thanks for taking the time to do this. You know, when you look at it for Ryan, the first thing, really, he bounced out in that first inning, looked really good. Struggled with command in the second. Yeah, big time. I mean, it, I think all the walks have scored today so far. So both teams trying to walk him and get out of it hasn't really been a great plan so far, it seems, right? And your thoughts with him, I'm sure you want him to go as long as you can, obviously, with a second ball game today. Well, yeah, no, he's built up a, a little bit here. I mean, you know, he's hanging around 60 right now. So, you know, we know where he's at. We want him to give us, give, him, uh, give us as many innings as he can, though, for sure. Well, thanks for taking the time. We'll visit with you later today. Okay, sounds good. Thanks. Ryan Beard out for his fourth inning of work. 8 9 1 due for Texas. These two guys did some damage their first time up. Michael McCann has hit in every ball game. He's driven in five. He's just off to a fantastic start. For, for Ryan Beard and, and for any pitcher in that matter. It shows you how this game is. He goes out and has a one, two, three first. Texas throws up a seven spot. He goes out in the fourth or the third and strikes out the side all three looking. He, he continued to pitch. You have to continue to make pitches. You can't dwell on what happened or what, it, what you think might happen again. That's what makes baseball so great is, is one, in, one inning to the next. Everything just changes like that. Well, that's 27 battles between a pitcher and a hitter. And each one of them is, is totally different. The 3 1. Just misses outside, ball four. Josh Regan, opposite field. Home run, two run shot, first of his career. Quick visit. Nobody in the Boiler Maker bullpen at this point. This is more of a mechanical issue, maybe something you're seeing. Again, it's the mental part of the game. Yeah. You, you can't just go out there and throw the ball and expect everything to be a strike or called a strike and, and get away with it. And I'm sure Coach Kirby right there is that's that's what it's about. Get yourself focused, get yourself back in the zone. You saw what you did last inning when you get the ball over the plate. You never know what's going to happen, but you always say it. There's no defense for, for walks. You can't, you can't defend it. There's not. I mean, you can make a great pitch and get a double play ball. That'll get you out of one. But if you continue to walk people, you're going you're to pay. A long conversation here, one of the longest we've seen. Jerry Johnson will come out. This might be waiting on Johnson to find out where these pitches were. You know, sometimes you wait on that umpire to come out there and say, hey, you know, where are where are all these pitches? Yeah, I understand that, but he didn't say anything last inning when two of them were outside and he got <laughs> called strike three. So <laughs> it works both ways. It does. <laughs> but I guess he wants consistency, maybe. That's that's all he's asking for. No one warming up at this time. That was the 14th walk issued by Purdue pitching. And just a little bit over nearly a game and a half of this four game set. You look at these freshmen, they have made an impact in this ball game and all season long. Two homers by freshmen. Inside corner. Evens the count at one and one. Freshman from Amherst, New Hampshire, did finish his career at the IMG Academy in Florida. Bunts and bunts it foul. 
one and two to Bryce. Top of the order and Duke Ellis awaits on deck. Seventieth pitch of the ball game coming from Beard. Throw over. Sneaky wheels. Sneaky wheels. He'll come back and tell everybody, hey, you saw him throwing over when I was over there. You had some song? You had people throw over when you were Oh, yeah. Hey, I got you had sneaky wheels? Hey, you won't believe this. I got more than 10 bags in one season in, in the big leagues. You were a 10-10 guy? I, no, I was more than that. Well, I mean. I had only 12 bags. <laughs> a 12-12 guy. No, I was more than 12. I, a 12-30 guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> two and two to Regan. That's all right. I could run out of sight in a week, though. <laughs> well, I'm no one to get on anyone else's speed. <laughs> you give me a couple of days, I can get out of sight. Beard comes set. To over again. Hmm. Yeah. Michael saying that I'm a threat. Well, he's throwing a couple. I'd possibly send him right here. I mean, he, he, I don't think he's going to throw over again. Beard set. Again with his lead, not running. Fouled off right side. We'll do it again at two and two. Bryce steps back in. Shot foul at the plate. Good at bat going right here. Both teams with four hits. The difference, the base on balls. Walks and the extra base hits. Yep. Seventh pitch of the at bat coming. Flip throw over. Now Michael's saying, hey, what's the deal? Trying to wear out the catcher over there. Yeah. Beard set again. <laughs> that time Michael started to put his hand up and say, hey, come on, man. Do you see what position I play? Well, let's just shorten your lead. Beard set. Popped up. Powers puts it away for the first out of the inning. So one gone back to the top of the order to Duke Ellis. He has walked for the 12th time this season and scored, and struck out in this ball game. On base percentage, look at that. 571. That's doing the job at the top of the order. It's what you want. Junior Nacogdoches breaking ball misses inside let's see what those sneaky wheels do right here you think it's a hit and run situation let's see what happens not going he, he started to you Breaking ball catches the outside corner. Got a good crowd's made their way into the ballpark. It sure is am. a gorgeous day. Get some sunshine. Throw over. I don't think Michael McCann's had as many people throw over in this particular time at first base in his entire career. His life. Well, for one thing, the guys on the bench are getting a good look at the move. Fastball. Ellis Tardy on. Got it by him. It's one and two.
Beard set. Fouled off. Third time through the order for the Texas offense. Missed outside. And the count evens. Always think it's a big advantage as a hitter. The many the times you get to go to the plate, you get to see it over and over and see that release point. There goes McCann. Swing and a miss. Couldn't come up with it. McCann gets a bag. Well, he did still one. Eric Kennedy steps in. He hit a rocket out of here his last time up. Didn't need the breeze for this one. This was about 30 foot off the ground and out of here. So Bryce Bonner was set up outside right there. He, you have to reach back over the plate. A lot of times those go a long way. Five strikeouts now for Beard. Pitch misses for ball one. Second homer of the year for Eric Kennedy. Bonner does a nice job keeping that in front. Good hitters count coming. Todd awaits on deck. Sweeping breaking ball catches the zone. There's a difference between that sweeper, Greg, and that one that's got some bite to it. That one stays upstairs. And it's three and one. It's a different, just a different rotation of the wrist. Between the getting on top of it for the bite and getting on the side of it to get that sweep. A lot of time that one is the one you want to get over the plate for a strike. 3-1 to Kennedy. That was the one you were talking about right there. And it's count. I mean, 2-0, he threw the sweeper. 3-1, he threw the sweeper. Though that one that really bites when you're ahead in the count, 0-2, 1-2. The three two on the ground. Kinsey has it steps on the back. The Longhorns come up empty through four. Texas leads by four. Great views of the great city of Austin. Let's have some barbecue. Come back to UFCU Dishfog Field. 7 3 Texas lead. Blair Henley struggled in that first inning. Greg, since then, has really settled in. Yeah, the three hits and the three runs in the first, just one hit since. Sometimes you have to adjust on the fly. I mean, you struggle in your first start, you struggle in your first inning, and your second start, since that first inning, more breaking balls, better, a really good change up, pitching backwards, but being effective because he's got a good feel for it. The 1 0. That hits him. Second hit batter of the ball game by Blair Henley. So a leadoff base runner. Here in the fifth inning, they got a leadoff base runner in the fourth, and a leadoff base runner in the first. Powers will step in. Grounded the second, his last time up. You stay right there, you're going to be some, have some success. Still got good velocity on it. That was 90 plus. A 
Sophomore from Lafayette looking for his first knock of the year as he steps in. Tries to bunt his way on, bunts it foul in the box. Quickly, it's 0-2. McCann quick behind the plate. Bounces out there in a hurry. McKenzie, the leadoff top of the order, awaits on deck here, top of the fifth. In game one of two today. Misses. Almost looked like it had a little cut to it. He's been working on that sometimes, but when, when you can't find your fastball, you can't really throw it that much. Yeah. This inning seems like he's trying to find the fastball back. Got the hit by pitch with the fastball, and he's thrown a couple good ones here to Powers. Yeah, if you could find that in this point in the game to go along with your off-speed pitch stuff, it's you could get real deep. One, two on the ground. Going to be a tough play. Regan has it, bobbles. It was going to be a tough play to get an out. We'll see how they call that. He's trying to make the transition from his glove. He was going to second base to cover on the fake. And I think they're going to, they may call this E6 in the first miscue of the year for the freshman. So the hit batter. Miss Q brings the top of the order back with a couple on here. McKenzie has walked and scored and grounded to short. Fastball in there for a strike. Looking to drive in his first run of the year is Cole. Henley set. Break a ball. Knocked down. Absolutely nothing McCann could do. He got it smothered. It bounces away and everybody moves up 90 feet. Yeah, fastball, you can keep that in front of you, but break a ball has some spin on it. But no hesitation out there by the base runners. So once that ball hit the dirt, they were off. Yeah. Wild pitch. right out in front of the plate goes to first no advancement that's a big out for Henley right there for the first out of the inning just cued him right off the end of the bat on the changeup back to the changeup Owen Jansen will step in Jansen singled in the first Grounded out his last time up. Infield back for Texas. They'll surrender the run on the ground ball. Top of this order has done most of the damage this season for Purdue. This ball hit pretty well into the gap in right center. Ellis will not get there. It's going to be off of the wall. This is going to score a couple as Jensen doubles, and all of a sudden we have a 7 5 ball game. Nice. Got it into that breeze, Greg. Change up that one upstairs. He left that one up. I still had some good fade on it, but left it up. But a good job right there by staying back on the change up, driving it with the breeze. Once it gets in the breeze, it's tough to catch up with, even with Duke Ellis's speed. Back to the hit batter, the miscue, and then all of a sudden, they've cut the lead in half out of the Boilermakers. David Pierce was out of the dugout. I mean, before the ball got back in and time was called, he was walking toward the mound. So. Another one of those conversations. He's having a good little conversation with Blair. Always teaching. Tying run will come to the plate now. 
Nissel has been hit by a pitch and grounded to the mound. So he is 0 for 1 in this one. You can see the line now for Henley. Jensen out at second base. Conversation over. Breaking ball misses downstairs for ball one. You're at that part of the order with these left handers coming. This becomes a big out for Henley. He's trying to qualify himself for the victory here in the fifth. It's a big out and the Texas bullpen is quiet. No one warming up. The one one from Henley. Did he go? He did not. This will out in front now two and one. Maybe the best pitch of the at bat right here. You know Henley does not want to go to three one. Off of the fist going to be a tough play. Todd cannot get to it. Drops in, runners at first and third here. Didn't hit it hard, but hit it in the right spot. Well, a good, I mean, a good pitch, obviously, to get in on him, but enough strength to get it. He got it up in the breeze as well. Doesn't have to go out of the park or in the gap. So that one just floated over the right in front of Austin Tyler. No. Basher will step in. This guy's got big time power. He is all of a sudden the go ahead run. Stepping in. Still no activity in the Texas bullpen. Fastball. This is outside for ball one. Singled into first and scored. Hit into a 4 6 3 double play his last time up. Longhorns looking for that right here. Wonder if they might put a runner in motion here. One to stay out of the double play. Fesh is three for six with runners on this year. Fakes the go. Balls downstairs. Doesn't get the call. And all of a sudden now it's two and oh. It's a, again, two oh, two one pitches to me are the most dangerous. Because of the fact is that you can really zone out in a spot, look for something to drive. Here comes the 2 0. Hits it hard to left, comes on if Kennedy can't get to it. Falls in front, and all of a sudden a three spot again by Purdue, and they've cut the lead to seven to six. Off the plate. Drops in front of Kennedy out there. And I, I think it was a good play to let it. You take a risk right there and dive for it. Now two runs are going to score. You don't like that when you're on the bump. Five for nine now with runners in scoring position is Purdue. And it's a seven six ball game. Second time in the ball game. Ball makers have put a three spot up. Still threatening for more here. I think there would start to be some activity soon in, in the Texas bullpen. Do you have Mason Bryant starting to loosen up down there? Hunter he's had a good day already. He's two for two as he steps in. Break the ball in there for a strike. Henley out in front now, one and two. Hunter steps back in.
Inside step move. Hunter steps back in. Chopped on the ground, foul. That's getting fooled right there, but just keeping the bat alive. You could tell he was looking for something off speed. All of a sudden, oh, it's a fastball. I better just react. Try to make some contact. Hunter back in. One, two again. Got him. That's the breaking ball you were talking about in that right location. Dropped it on his back foot. That's what they worked on all season last year, but yeah, that's the one right there. You left hander just ties them up. Drop it right on that back leg. Johnny Sage steps in. He's in into a double play and grounded the short. Had a big bowl in last night's ball game. Over the top of that breaking ball. Same spot. It's got some pop. This is outside. Tried to overthrow that one a little bit. And the count evens. Throw to third, and they got him. Second time in this series we've seen that third out at third base. They got a good break, but Michael McCann gets a good grip on the ball and makes a strong throw down to Brian Reynolds at third. It's like Christmas Day if you're a baseball fan. LSU is ranked number one in the country. This is hit. Number one team in the land invades Austin, Texas next weekend. First game of that series, we have Texas game day, 6 o'clock, game time, 6.30. You can see the comparisons. Uh, I tell you what, head-to-head, -head, it's been a heck of a series. Both second all-time, tied for the most titles with six apiece. It'll have a super regional feel. I mean, it this, will. This place should be packed. It will be hopping. Not only with burnt orange, but purple and yellow. We're going to have a visitor come sit in with us, too. I'm looking forward to Big having Ben McDonald. Big Ben up here with us. Austin Todd steps in. Longhorns now with a 7 6 lead. Three in the first and three in the top of the fifth. Purdue has six runs on seven hits. Texas got all seven of their runs in the second. They've done it on four base hits. It's ripped into left. Jensen had no chance right there. I would call that a base hit. We'll see what the official score says, but this ball was a bullet. You know, it's buying before he knows it. Ball up over the middle of the plate. Gets by you in a hurry. So the leadoff base runner for Todd. That brings Tinsky to the plate. DJ, 0 for 2 in this one. Upper part of the zone for a strike. Is activity in both bullpens. I think both of these guys are on short leashes. Beard set. Austin Peterson for the Boilermakers. Ninety pitches now. Ryan Beard had the one big inning. The two homers by Texas in that inning. This on the ground into the corner. 
Todd with great speed on his way to third. He will be held by Sean Allen. Second and third, and nobody out. Jensen, no chance to get this one either. This is right down the line. Ball down and in. DJ just drops the head on it. It's a ball almost down in the corner. Todd, that ball gets by the third baseman. They're playing off the line. You're thinking scoring. Being held up with no outs. Burleson will step in. Second and third, nobody out. Texas trying to answer the three spot that Purdue got in the top. Break the ball in their first strike. Looking for his first hit of the year. Big time to get one right here. Steps back in. Ripped into the corner. This is down. On his way to second is Burleson. In with a sliding two run double. And Texas has an answer. Leads now nine to six. Again, Bonner coming back over the plate. And Sam Bertelson, strong young man right there. This ball hits off the wall on the fly. I'm thinking it was hit so hard, he might not have a chance to get the second, but he was busting it out of the box all the way. First career hit, first career RBI. For Sam, Texas has an answer. Ballermakers will go to the bullpen. Beard will give you his numbers. We come back. 9 6 Texas lead here in the bottom of the fifth. Nine six ball game as Texas answers the three spot. That Purdue got in the top with two of their own, and they will go to the bullpen for the first time today, and they will bring in Austin Peterson. He is a 6'6", 230-pound freshman for Chesterton, Indiana. Still trying to get it going here his freshman year. A couple of appearances. This is his third of the year. Taking a loss of two of Purdue's losses this year. Young man's got... A talented arm and good size is trying to find it here early on his freshman year. And then you look at Ryan Beard. He really had three innings where he was really good. Struggled in the other the four walks a major part of it. Three of those four have come in to score. Got nine runs all nine. Nils and then Sam Bertelson with his first career knock. And career RBIs off of the wall. And it's a 9 6 ball game. Still nobody out here, bottom of the fifth inning. Reynolds, the switch hitter from the left side. Peterson comes set. Downstairs for ball one. One for two as he steps in. Scored a run as Ryan. <laughs> Chopped on the ground. Kinsey has it, steps on the back. For the first out of the inning, but a productive out. When you got nobody out, get that guy over. Reynolds did exactly what he's supposed to do right there. Now I would think Purdue probably will bring the infield up here. As freshman Lance Ford steps in. Ford struck out, walked, and scored. Infield up. 
Did he start and stop right there? Got close. He did. He caught himself in time and then yeah. decided I better step off here. Downstairs for ball one. Both teams with seven hits. Texas leads by three here. Ball hit pretty well into the gap. This will get the job done. Can he get to it? Hunter with a nice running catch. Tagging. Though it's Burleson coming in to score. Sacrifice fly. 10-6 Texas. Tell you what, Skyler Hunter got on his horse right here. He's just shaded on the right field side. He goes a long way to catch up with that ball. Wow. Michael McCann steps in. He has doubled, <laughs> drive, drove in a couple. His first time up, he has walked, stole a base. It's a big ball game as the senior from Round Rock. Just misses downstairs, and it's 2-0. Oh. Greg, there, the inability of those strikes still is just hit, having a tough time pitching ahead. And as a hitter, if, you, if I'm, you're allowed me to be 2-1, 2-0, and 3-1, one, and oh and and I got a great opportunity to square the ball up. The 3 0 in there for a strike. On the ground. In time. And that ends the inning. But not before damage done again. Sam Bertelson, the big blow of the, of the inning. As he gets his first career knock, drives in two. Texas softball across Kamal Street going on all weekend long. You can watch them take on Ole Miss and Tulsa later tonight. Catch it all on LHN or the Watch ESPN app. Yes. McCombsville across the street. Forget we have second game of the double hitter here today. There's all kinds of activity going on. The Texas women beat Texas Tech earlier today across the street at the Irwin Center. Yeah. Early this morning. Earlier this morning. A couple ball games. A couple softball games. Blair Henley out for his sixth inning of work. He has yielded six runs, seven hits in this ball game, but his offense has put a 10 spot on the board. Pass ball. And a good one in the nine, low 90s there for a strike. Sage was at the plate. Nissel was thrown out trying to steal third. That's kind of a rule of thumb of baseball. The first and third out shouldn't be made at third. And what a ball. great hustle by McCann. He got to it while it was fair. Jerry Johnson, the home plate umpire, said that, that that ball was fair, that it didn't land off of, of Sage. And McCann stayed with it, and he's getting right to it right as he gets to the line and gets his hand on it. It's in fair, fair territory right there. They're going to bring the group together here. I'm thinking it might have hit off Sage. I think that's what they're asking. Sage has not left home play. He never he never did. So that's, that gives you the indication that maybe it did hit him. And it looked like right there it caught him off the right knee. Get a chance to see it again. Watch the right knee. Our shin. Yeah, it looked like to me it ricocheted right off his shin. Had some spin on it. What hustle by Michael McCann, even though. Oh, yeah, stay with it. Stay with it. Got it right on the line. Yeah. 
Replay is available on a ball that's fair or foul. They're going to call him out and not review it. It's not reviewable. Well, that hustle by Michael yeah. McCann. <laughs> well, that's a right great there. hustle right wow. there. It was 2 3 on the put out. You can't review it, Greg. The ball didn't get past first base. <laughs> so it, 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 you can have a meeting to find out if there was anybody saw the contact, but it's not reviewable until it gets past in fair territory, whether it's fair or foul, past the bag. Sponner steps in for two in this one up the middle Regan with good range to his left sets his feet throws in time and two quick outs here in the sixth for Blair Henley and David Pierce sticking with Blair Henley in this inning just wanting him to keep grinding through grind through it I mean if you can get get out there giving up three in the first three in the fifth but all the second, third, fourth, and this inning, he's been outstanding. It, and that's what he wants to do, get that pitch count up. Only went two innings against Louisiana. But continue to grind, continue to pitch. This is when you're working on that mentality, that concentration. Oh, yeah. Greg, you're not happy because of the earned runs you gave up and everything you're doing, but you've got to push through this and give your team a chance to win anyway. Exactly. No pitcher I've ever met in the world likes to give up Ernie's. No, <laughs> that's, that's no, you can you can give up ten and you're, you score fifteen and win. And you you still have to like it. Yeah, your team gets the win, but you don't you're not going to like a ten run performance. No. The one two here with a chance to get out of it in the sixth. Way ahead in the count. Another, you doesn't have to be lefty to, to bear it on the back leg. You can bear it away to righties, like that right there. Throw to first in time and the strikeout. And one, two, three. Inning for Blair Henley in the six. 10 6 ball game. To college baseball sometimes is unusual. Bryce Regan had that opportunity last weekend. So we. Pinch hit for Bryce Regan. Well, Ford goes out to second. Hibbler's going to short, but so is Regan. Because he didn't understand that when you get removed from the game that you don't get to re-enter. <laughs> so I thought that was pretty interesting. Well, you know, you understand that high school rules have a re-entry rule. <laughs> he was going back to play short. I'm in defense of the young man. He, he's never been pinch hit for in his life. No, he just went big fly for his first career homer early in the ball game. He's had a good game. He's played outstanding defense uh, and the two run shot his first time up. 10 6 Texas out in front here as Peterson out for his first full inning of work. He came on to finish out that bottom of the fifth for Purdue. Breaking ball downstairs. Obviously, he's a true freshman thrown into the mix just because of the injury to David Hamilton, who suffered a ruptured Achilles in preseason. Breaking ball right there for strike three call. You know, it, it's hard sometimes to overcome that. I, I truly believe this, Greg. I don't know how you feel, but. It happening when it happened at least the entire team can say all right we're going to be without David it wouldn't be like he started was it happened in the middle of the season because that could be some kind of really tough to adjust to sometimes if it happens early and you have a major blow like that you you, you can you got to cut that page off and going down the road yeah I mean when it happened it's unfortunate I'm very unfortunate that that it happened because he's an all-american type player but it gives a kid an opportunity instead of 
like you said, two or half months into the season, it hasn't played very much, and now you got to throw him into the mix right in the heart of the season. So Bryce Regan getting the start at the very beginning of the season, and you know, you, you wouldn't know what you have out there. I mean, you know when he came in as a as a recruit what you're going to get, but you don't know what what exactly is going to happen on the field. And he's proven right now that to be a great replacement. Tate Shaw will be the pinch hitter for Duke Ellis. Duke was 0 for 2 in this one. He had walked and scored. But Shaw, the senior from here in Westlake, is the pinch hitter. From the left side. The 1 1 for Peterson. Had him out in front. And it's 1 and 2 to Tate. The one two delivery downstairs and it's two and two the slider machine. Bonner's done a nice job of smothering that too. Behind the plate. Ripped in the right. Shaw with excellent speed on his way to second with a stand up double. Tough job to be a pinch hitter. Shaw comes off the bench and just rips it to right. Tough job being a pinch hitter. Tough job you haven't had a hit this season. First hit of the year right there for Tate Shaw. This guy's played a lot of ball here. Can do a lot of different things. His Shaw family's been around here a while. Brother Colin played four years here as well. Eric Kennedy steps in. Part of Brothers Three himself. Ben, Nick, and now Eric. Did his second career home run earlier in the ball game. Fourth double of the game, Shaw's for Texas. Eric steps back in. Back to the mound. Peterson looks at Shaw, but he was off balance. Make sure he gets an out. Moving up to third is Tate Shaw. It's good to look. Check the runner, but at this point in the game, you want to get the out. 6'6 six, six man on that mound does a good job of staying with it right there. Gets the glove down. Gets the out. It's a long way to bend over to get that ball when it's yeah. coming back fast at you like that. At that height. Austin Todd steps in. He's one for three and has scored a run. Rips this ball foul. Third baseline. Junior from Round Rock. He's been productive all season long so far. Hitting 400 as he steps in right now. This ball hit hard to right. Wind's going to pick it up. Looking up. This ball's into the seats. Into the bullpen. It's third of the day for Texas. Talk about the win. That's right. In the opening. That's the third home run for Texas. Two into the bullpen. And went over at the 365 sign in right center. They've all been to right and all been carried out by the win. Fastball away, and Todd does his job to reach out, goes with it, doesn't try to pull it, and then rides the breeze into the Texas bullpen. Doesn't get out by much, but it doesn't have to get out by much. Third of the day by the Longhorns. Two run shot by Regan. Two run shot by Kennedy and a two run shot by Todd. Rip down the left field line on a hanging breaking ball. Just popped the trigger too quick.
Texas did not have a multiple home run game until today. And now they got three in one ball game. Misses outside. But just in the sixth, there could be more. Well, everybody seems to have scored today in this lineup, I will tell you that. Ten different players have scored for Texas. The payoff to DJ. On the ground. Jensen picks it up, across the diamond in time, and that ends the inning, but not before damage done. Austin Todd. Opposite field, two-run shot, third of the ball game by Texas hitters, 12-6, Texas out front. Jumped out three nothing. Texas came right back with two homers in the inning and put a seven spot on the board. Zeke and then all of a sudden Purdue made it a seven six ball game. Since then Texas has scored five unanswered. We have a 12 six ball game. Gets you the defensive alignment momentarily. I believe Tate Shaw goes in the game. He will play left field. Eric Kennedy moves from left field to center. And that's the defensive alignment and Henley out for his seventh inning of work breaking ball misses downstairs and keep grinding it keep putting him out there the more he gets out there, the more confidence he's going to have. He's been roughed up in two of the innings today. Other than that, he's been really good. And he's established it. That, you know, when you establish. I think he's established that he can he can do this. He's still got to get that mental mindset. I mean, obviously he had a, a miscue in one of the three run frames. You know, they're pushing him into the 90s. I think they're trying to extend him because he's going to get a chance to get the ball again next weekend as a start. Well, as you mentioned, you, you're not happy about giving up six, but. It is a day where runs are going to be scored. Well, you look at it. You get out of this inning, you say, yeah, I give up six, but I, I, I grind. I mean, I didn't have my best stuff, obviously. My best stuff is yet to come. But I pitched seven innings. I went seven innings with the stuff I had today. Two quick outs there. Jansen will step in. Jansen has had a good ball game. He's got a couple of knocks, scored a couple of times. Breaking ball. Well, that gets both Jansen and Michael McCann. He took a, the ricochet that time. Sometimes you're in a vulnerable position as a catcher. It's both of them. That's when you get sort of turned and it gets underneath that <laughs> got a chest protector. A little jab. And that's going to be all. We're going to have a pitching change. Six and two thirds for Blair Henley. 
He is going to be the pitcher of record as he goes out. We'll review that. Give you the new pitcher for the Texas Longhorns when we come back. 10, 12, 6, excuse me, Longhorns. Well, you look at it, and Greg, we've talked about it. You look at Henley, it's not one of those outings that he's going to sit there and go, I feel really good about. But on the back side of that, as you mentioned, he battled through it and just kept going and kept grinding and gave his team some length and an opportunity to win the game. Yeah, just the one walk, but you could just tell it, it, it was a grind for Blair out there with, with all of his pitches. I mean, after the first, he, he kind of made an adjustment on the fly, went to the breaking ball. That was effective for him, and you learn by games like this, and that's what Coach Pierce is telling you. I mean, he's, he's teaching him right now about everything he did out there today and all the good things he did out there to, to get his team into the seventh inning. Mason Bryan is the new right hander. He's a 6'5", 220 pound freshman right here in Austin from McCallum High School. He has made one appearance as a Longhorn. It was a crucial one. Game one of the year, he came on to earn the save after Texas had taken the lead in the top of the 10th inning. So Bryant comes on here in relief of Henley. He'll be facing Nissel. Who is one for two in this one? And that save against Louisiana gave up a hit, but did strike out the side. Struck out three. Creates great tilt with his height. Good athlete. Outstanding wide receiver from the McCallum Knights here in town as a football player. Second appearance on the mound as a Texas Longhorn. Side out of play quickly. Bryant out in front. The balls and two strikes. Nissel steps back in. Shadow starting to creep toward home plate. We'll have that the rest of the afternoon for the second game of this double hitter. Misses right there, but hits his location, does Bryant. Lights are on here, even though it is a gorgeous day. Bryant set. The one, two. Foul ball. We'll do it again. Good velocity. Mason can throw it mid 90s, 94, 95 miles an hour. Got a little cutter, slider. I like how he comes right after you. Yeah. Off of the fist. Regan under, puts it away. And that ends the inning. Six and a half in the books, 12 6 Texas. Let's get to know a little bit more about Sam Bertelson. Who am I? I'm a sophomore infielder at the University of Texas. Uh, my favorite movie is Interstellar. My favorite book series is Harry Potter. And my favorite baseball team is the Cincinnati Reds. Who am I? Sam Bertelson. First career knock. In this ball game, first career RBI as he steps in here. Cincinnati Reds, you know why he's a Cincinnati Reds fan? He Joy says Joey Vada. Jody Vada. Burleson to he's center. Locked in. He is locked in. Second hit. Into left center. A good start. In the seventh for Texas. Tenth hit of the ball game by the Longhorns.
So Ryan Reynolds will step in. Ryan one for three. Scored a run. Switch hitter from the left side against Peterson. Freshman Ryan Hender set. Toward breaking ball for a strike. Missed outside. And the count evens. Reynolds digs back in. Hit well to right, but playable. Over the head, that ball took off. And Sage, who's made a couple of good plays, this ball was playable. He just, he just misjudged it. Hardest ones we talk about is that liner right at you. They kind of drifted on it. Ball just kept carrying. Over his head. Because at this point, he's just going to get the ball back to the infield. A double for Ryan Reynolds. Orange returners on second and third with no outs. Sometimes you get fooled. That ball just, it looked like he had a beat on it. Took a couple of steps and looked like he was going to be right there. And that ball just kept going. Wynn did pick it, helped pick it up. Breaking ball just missed outside. Ford has walked and scored. Did a sacrifice fly and struck out. Second and third, nobody out here. Bonner again has done a great job behind the plate. Keeps that ball in front. has picked back up a little bit. Yeah. Outside. And three and zero to Ford. Longhorns have been good with runners in scoring position today. Side and that loads the bases. Extra base hits have been a major part of it. It was the fifth double of the ball game. We're going to have a pinch hitter. Zach Zubia will pinch hit for Michael McCann. I think with a six run lead. A chance to tack on more right here, give Michael McCann's legs a little, little break. Yeah. The rest of this ball game, possibly, can come back, get the second game of this doubleheader. You never know. You never know what's going to happen. I would think that we're going to see Peter come in behind the plate. Zach Zubia. Sophomore from Richmond will step in. Over oh three last night was Zubia. Walk and boy, hit a ball is about as hard as you could hit it. Sage made a great play on it. The 0 1. Inside. Count evens. Zach steps back in. Oh. 
Breaking ball. One and two to Zubia. Just continues to come back with the breaking ball sliders. A lot from this young man. Upstairs, count evens at two and two. You gotta look for it now. He's been missing with the fastball and getting the breaking ball over for the most part. Ball of makers a double play depth in the infield. They will surrender a run to try to turn the double play. Two two inside corner strike three call. Got away from the MO right there. Painted a fastball right on the inside part of the plate. Right there. Bryce Bonner set up. Got the call. Bryce Regan. First career homer, his first time up to drive in a couple. One for three in the ball game. Slider misses downstairs. Peterson with a long look in. Now comes set. Got away with it. Ball up in the zone that time. Just enough speed off of the breaking ball. Fastball, tardy on, and now it's one and two. Regan digs back in. One, two. Did he go? They check. He did not. And the count goes even. Six runs, seven hits, no miscues for Purdue. Twelve runs on 11 hits. Two miscues for Texas. The 2 2. Had him out in front, just gets a piece of it. Regan digs back in. Austin Peterson comes set. Off of the fist into the stands. Good at bat going on here by the true freshman. Seventh pitch of the at bat coming. Nice souvenir. I got one. Did you get yours? I got one. That's what he said. Oh, yeah. He said, I got one. Two two again. Got him out in front. Is pulled the string on the breaking ball. Back to back strikeouts. Back to the top of the order. To Tate Shaw. Third strikeout for Peterson since coming into the game. Second of Regan. First battery face when he entered the game. Tate doubled and scored. His last time up. Against Peterson. Long look in now. The big right hander set. Inside step move. Reynolds is going, hey, there's nobody back here. And there's a runner in front of him. Yeah. 
I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. Slider in there. It's more of a sweeping breaking ball. Slurve. Was there? Yeah. More, more of a slurve than a real tight slider. Quickly out in front now. No balls and two strikes. Longhorns loaded them up here. Single, double walk. Back to back strikeouts. Peterson with a chance to pitch out of it here. The ones that sweep more than bite are easier to control in the zone. The 0 2 way upstairs. Most of home plate now in the shadow. Nice job by Bonner again. He's had a nice job behind the plate today. Texan from Allen. Getting to play at home in his home state. He's done a nice job. From 0-2 to 2-2. And here it comes. Count goes full. Fifty three pitches now out of the bullpen. Now could be a good time to try that inside. Move. Yeah, would be. Three, two, two outs. Runners will be off. Pay off to Shaw. Pulled foul. Got in on his fist. You know, when you're running seventh pitch of the at bat coming, you're running from third. You don't you don't do a whole lot right here. You get back out of the way and say, what the If you're a runner at first right here, this you can really turn the jets on. Pay off again. Slider misses downstairs. Ball four. Thirteenth run of the game comes in on the bases loaded walk. Third time today that Burleson has scored. Got his first career ribby, his first career knock. He's got two knocks. He scored three times, had a big ball game. RBI for Tate Shaw. Kennedy's big blow, a two run homer. He's one for four as he steps in. He hit that ball hard. Oh, the homer? Yes. The wind has helped some of the balls get out of the ballpark to ride. His didn't need any help. And zero. Tried to check the swing. Did he go around? He did not. Count evens at one and one. Seven in the second for Texas, three in the fifth, two in the sixth, and now one here in the seventh. Inside with the fastball. Thirteen runs on the board, a season high. Ties his season highs. They scored 13 on Tuesday against the Rice Owls. Top to third, cross the diamond in time, and that ends the inning, but not before the Longhorns put another one on the board and lead here, 13-6. The perfect bed is Christmas Day if you're a baseball fan. LSU is ranked number one in the country. This is hit home.
Preseason number one, LSU comes to Austin for a three-game set next weekend. And you can see the Friday night projected starters. You look at Hess, he, he struggled in his first out. He was really good last night. Elder has pitched extremely well in his two ball games. Should be a good one. 6.30, 6 o'clock start with Texas game day. 6.30 first pitch. And we've got some, some changes here. Yeah, Sam Bertelson moves from first base over to third base. And Zach Zubia moves into first base. Caston Peter comes in behind the plate. He's the new catcher. And Mason Hibbler moves in at short. Changes for Texas. Mason Bryant out for his first full inning of work. He came on to finish out that seventh inning. He'll be facing four, five, six. For Purdue. Texas fell behind in this ballgame, Greg, 3 0, but the seven spot really, since that point, it actually became a 7 6 ball game in the top of the fifth inning. And Texas since then has put up six unanswered. Yeah, it's been back and forth. Both teams battling. Texas really battled after dropping down 3 0 in the first. There's a Bryant gets to chase. The high fastball right there with the first out of the inning, but Purdue continued to battle back. They made it a ball game, but since then, Texas matched their three and added three more after that to get a seven run lead. Skyler Hunter will step in. He's got a couple of knocks today. He's two for three as he steps in. First time he's seen Bryant. Upstairs for ball one. Hitting fourth hit better by Texas pitching today. So that'll bring Johnny Sage to the plate. Sage 0 for 3 as he steps in. Hunter at first. Bryant set. Off speed. The right spot. Look like a cutter. He's, he has a, a really good slider that can get under the bat like that, but also the cutter as well. Time called. Gate is open in the left field in the bullpen. They get it closed. We're back to play. Not holding the runner at first, but still in double play depth for the Texas infielders. Off of the fist. Coming on quickly as Todd. Can he get to it? The throw to second. Might get the force. He does. Hunter was in no man's land there, Greg. He, he you know, you got to get almost halfway, and he didn't get far enough out there. And the, Todd can't get that there. Plays the hop, makes a good strong throw. Skyler, he was creeping, but just not far enough. A good throw, and then Hippler out there has to become like a first baseman. Made a good play. Fielder's choice. Fielder's choice, 9-6 on the put out. Oh, and Sage thought he had a knock. <laughs> you know, you, you that, you, that's going to drop in. <laughs> yeah, it's going to drop in. I'm going to get a knock. Oh, I'm not. Bonner looking for his first hit of the year. Up and away, and it's 2-0. Told you he's the junior from Allen, Texas. 
Jesuit College Prep. Way outside. It's 3-0 to Bonner. To the screen. Bonner walks. Moving up third is Sage. So runners at first and third here, and we'll have a pinch hitter. It is Patrick W. Smith. He's a redshirt freshman from El Dorado Hills, California. So he will get the opportunity to pinch hit. He started last night's game as the DH. He comes on here. I wasn't seeing Bryce Elder too good last night. A couple of strikeouts. Comes up empty, empty there on a big swing. Bryant looks in for his sign. Didn't get the call. It has not been a large zone today. Not so much. Bryant said again, checks the runners. There goes the runner. No throw. Bonner down to second base. So two and one to Smith. Tried to check his swing and did. They're going to call it two and two. There's a foul ball. I thought it had contact. I heard something. Yeah. So a two two count now to Smith. Purdue has been pretty good with the runner scoring position today. They're five for 10. Opportunity here. Patrick W. Smith. There are two Patrick Smiths on the roster for Purdue. Patrick J. is a left-handed pitcher. Patrick W. is an outfielder. 2-2 Two -two from Bryant. Chop foul. We'll do it again. Bryant's on quite a few pitches. This is the seventh, and this at bat to Smith. Yeah. Got him. Nothing fancy about that. Came upstairs, second strikeout for Bryant. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Have you ever worked? World is. Andrew Baum and Corey Cobb starting pitchers for each of these respective clubs in game two, approximately 45 minutes after the conclusion of this ball game. Texas out in front 13 to six, bottom of the eighth inning. We're gonna have a pinch hitter. As Cameron Fields comes out. He will be pinch hitting for Austin Todd here. In the bottom of the eighth, Approximately 45 minutes at the conclusion of this ball game. We will have game two for you right here.
Cam steps in. Sophomore from Garland. Break the ball in there for a strike. Ryan Howell is the new shortstop for Purdue as he comes into the game. Which misses downstairs. Howell appeared in last night's ball game as well. Coach Waz has to be delighted about what he sees out of Austin Peterson, giving him some length out of that bullpen. Now you can see 60 plus pitches now. Got a good bender. You can see he's got some, he's got some stuff. This is going to be a guy that uh, is really going to help them out. That's his fourth strikeout since coming into the game. Good looking pitch right there. Tough to pick up. We've seen the Texas hitters. I mean, they've hit the ball when it's been up, but the one that's down, it's tough to pick up. DJ one for four. He scored a run. He's doubled. All down the right field line. Ooh, in that no man's land. McKenzie can't get to it. I think he thought it was going to keep going out of play. That ball just stayed right there. He gave up on it. Gave up on it. That's it. Bermuda Triangle, though. That's, that's yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's tough, just, tough, tough play. Tough play. It's just in a spot where nobody can get to it. He, you're to your right, right there. It just moved on him at the last minute. He thought he had a shot. No, oh. just stayed in. Stayed inside. This one you got to get an out on if you can. This ball hit pretty well to center. Into the breeze, though. Hunter able to round it up. See what the breeze is doing to it. He goes back one direction and has to turn the other other direction to catch. Sam Bertelson's had a big day. Got his first career knock, first career RBIs, first career two-hit game. He scored three times. As he steps in here. Which is in there for a strike. Stairs in the count evens. Sophomore from Midland. One more Look out. foul. Wow. Fortunately for baseball, they put those screens now yeah. all the way past the dugout there, but that was close. The one two good breaking ball got him fifth strikeout for Peterson he he's given Purdue exactly what they needed we go to the ninth. View back into UFCU dish fuck field tomorrow night. Obviously he's one of the big nights in the movie industry the Oscars are out. Yes. So we had the opportunity to ask some of the Longhorns what were some of their favorite sports movies or maybe even baseball, baseball movies. baseball movies. My favorite baseball movie has to be Hardball. The Rookie. So I watched it growing up, you know, all the time. I like 61 with Mickey Mantle and Roger Maris. I do like a lot of the funny ones. Major League, one of my favorite ones with Charlie Sheen. Moneyball, for sure. Big Oakland A's fan. Brad Pitt's performance in that movie, incredible. I'm gonna have to say Sandlot, without a question. Just reminds me of my childhood. Well, you know, they, they, they say all those. It, it, the first one that jumps off the page for me is Bulldog. The Natural. The Natural is another great one. The love of the game. Love of the game. Kevin Costner. Yes. Longhorn fan. Augie Garrido coaching the Yankees. Oh, it, it, then how do you not have filled the dreams? Yes. It's, I and, mean, and the Oscar goes to. And the Oscar goes to. That, you got the envelope? I got the envelope. Got the envelope. <laughs> we'll hold that off to the next game. Donnie Diaz into the game, making his second appearance as a Longhorn. He pitched on Tuesday night down at Reckling Park in Houston. He's making his second appearance. Still, well, has been recovering from arm surgery. It's good to see him get back on the mound. 
healthy again through the two innings just one hit struck out one against the rice house comes in throws the first pitch breaking ball for a strike here today. This is outside Diaz. Young man it's got a four pitch mix. I mean he uses his. All of his stuff. Strikes are so important. If you got a mix, you got to mix strikes, though. You got to be able to throw all of them. Those strikes, yeah. exactly. Very important for starting pitchers, but even more importantly for coming out of that bullpen. A lot of times, games on the line, runners on base. That's Sudi Charlie making his pinch hit appearance, a sophomore from Long Beach. Not where you want to go, but got away with it. Came up with the strikeout. Cole McKenzie will step in. It's 0 for 3, but he has walked and scored a run. Looking for his first RBI of the year. Off of the end of the bat foul. In the count evens. Diaz set. This is up and away. Downstairs doesn't get the call. Again. It's been tight from the first inning through the ninth inning. Yeah, consistent. And the one out walk. McKenzie reaches for the second time today. Owen oh, Jensen. Jensen. Two for four. Actually, two for three today. I think he's been hit by a pitch. Double score. Fielder's indifference. They were not holding the runner. Kinsey down to second base. It's indifferent, though, to that pitcher to give up a base <laughs> hit here. When <laughs> that guy gets into scoring position, it's always on the pitcher. Topped on the ground. Zubia, Diaz, nice play on both ends by both guys. Second out of the inning. 3-1 on the put out. Not an easy play as they made it look right there. Zach, who hasn't played much first base in game situations, has to come in for this ball. And Donnie, who hasn't been out in game situations too often, gets a good line to the bag and a good feed from Zach. Nissel steps in. Ben. One for three in the ball game. He's been hit by a pitch, singled, grounded to the mound, and popped up. Break the ball, foul back. The count evens. Good pitch there. Dots the outside corner, and it's one and two. Longhorn fans come to their feet. The one-two. Way upstairs. 
And it's two and two to Nissel. Diaz comes set. Now steps off. When you look back at this ball game, the thing that jumps off the page is, is Longhorns found a way to overcome giving up three in the top of the first. Yeah, they answered. Each time Purdue scored, they answered with some of their own. And Blair Henley grinding out through six and two-thirds innings. Final score here, Texas 13, Purdue six. In about 45 minutes, we'll have your second game. For Greg Swindell and our entire crew, I'm Keith Moreland. So long. We'll see you in about 45.